So, what are we going to do today? Have you heard of Valmont Butte in Boulder, Colorado? I feel like I've read somewhere about indigenous people that used to live there mm -hmm. and that it used to be a mining town, but then most of the mining towns that have been there failed. And then something about it being haunted. Yeah, it's absolutely haunted. Every account that I've read, People have heard screaming there at night. They have heard all kinds of noises, tons of different things. People have seen things. I think if we go there, we're probably not going to see anything. And the reason for that is because we can't actually get on the property. In order to get onto the property, you have to basically trespass on what is now government property. So, I don't think we're going to see any ghosts or hear any ghosts, but we are actually going to get to send our drone in and we're going to see some incredible things that led to heavy contamination. So, let's go. Today, we are just 15 minutes from downtown Boulder, Colorado. We have talked to several people, not only in Boulder, but outside of Boulder, around Denver, who have no idea what this place is, or at, at the least that this place even exists. But you may be asking yourself, what exactly is this place? Volcanic dikes are tabular or sheet-like bodies of magma that cut through and across the layering of adjacent rocks. They form when magma rises into an existing fracture or creates a new crack by forcing its way through existing rock and then solidifies. Hundreds of dikes can invade the cone and inner core of a volcano. Sometimes, preferentially along zones of structural weakness. The Valmont Butte is located east of the Flatirons, just minutes outside of downtown Boulder, Colorado. This dike runs east to west, and its peaks reach high into the sky. Valmont Butte actually points to another sacred indigenous site, Sugarloaf. Valmont Butte is situated above the confluence of two major rivers creating this now sacred site. Valmont Butte was inhabited by the Arapaho tribe who considered this area their home for many years. Going back to the introduction of the indigenous peoples into the Americas, it was estimated that the Anazazi, thought to be the first tribe in America, arrived in what we now know as Colorado as early as 1 AD. These people were then thought to have inhabited the Meze Verde area around 550 AD and later expanded further across America for more land and resources. The Arapaho tribes were originally settled on the land, which we now know as Oklahoma, and then were pushed westward with the expansion of settlers. Valmont Butte became the Axis Mundi of the Arapaho nations and more than likely served as a connection between the earth and the afterlife. But it wasn't only the Arapaho that used this land. Archaeological findings have shown that there are many tribes using this land as sacred ground and they are uncovering who those tribes were as we speak. Valmont Butte was also used as sacred burial ground and to this day there are many unmarked graves below our feet from 
as early as 1000 AD. The Sand Creek Massacre of 1864 led to treaties being signed in 1867 and 1869, which forced the Arapaho tribe from this ancestral land to a small reservation back in Oklahoma. But the history doesn't end there. The town of Boulder provided a draw for settlers looking to strike gold and become rich. Valmont Butte became the location of the area's first flotation mill. A flotation method separates ore by altering their surfaces to a hydrophobic or hydrophilic condition. This site has changed hands several times and were known as St. Joe's Mill, Allied Mill Site, Valmont Mill, and many more. St. Joe's Mill was a gold mill in 1935, but went bankrupt after just two years. In 1937, it was converted to a floor spar mill. Floor spar is a white, colorless mineral and used to manufacture glass, enamel, and is the chief ore of fluorine. Allied Chemical Company purchased the mill in 1941 and continued mining floor spar for 30 years. The final product was shipped to the west coast, but the contamination was pumped back into radioactive tailings still prominent today. At the height of this mill's activity, they were using upwards of 200,000 gallons of water a day. What chemicals were used here though? And what was found in the soil? Well, the ore used contains several radionuclides, such as uranium, radium-226, radium-228, thallium, and vanadium. At the end of the process, the calcium fluoride was dried, packaged, and shipped off. The tailings were then contaminated with highly radioactive materials. It was found by the EPA that this whole area holds over 460,000 tons of contaminated soil. Over the years, they have attempted to clean this area, but in 1971, 150 tons of radium-contaminated soil went missing, and to this day, they have no idea of its final location. 40 tons were shipped to a radioactive disposal site in Nevada, but were later sent back because they were not equipped with handling the materials found in the soil. It was later dumped back on site and covered with non-contaminated dirt. This area measures in with contamination levels of 20,000 ppgs, whereas most all of the Rockies measure in at just one PPG. As Megan previously said, this area was ancestral burial ground for the indigenous people of this land. Despite the radioactive soil, this area was used for ceremonies up until 2007 by spiritual leader Robert Cross of the Lakota Sioux Tribe. Robert held vision quests here and used the rocks of this land in his ceremonial sweat lodge. Cross has said that the indigenous people were not told about the contamination, and it has led to many problems. For over a thousand years, this site was held in high regard, as grounds that held a connection to the past and the afterlife. This site was bought by the city of Boulder for $2.6 million in the year 2000. It is estimated that in order to clean up the land for a future sale, it will cost another $2.5 million in taxpayer money. It is currently thought that the land will eventually be returned to the indigenous people, all while preserving the burial sites, and will eventually be a place of prayer and reflection. Currently, this area is being closely monitored by archaeologists and the Arapaho Nation. So what do you think happened here? What was the downfall of Valmont Butte? Was this because a company chose to build on top of ancient indigenous burial ground? Or was it the result of a company choosing profit over culture and safety? Well, you know what we say. That's an exploration that only you can uncover.